This is How To Clinical Research and I am Eric Lombert, so let's get into it. So if you're thinking about becoming a clinical research associate, uh, you might be wondering how much they get paid. Uh, so this is the right video for you because I'm going to be going over what to expect um, of a clinical research associate salary in 2019. So to begin, really your starting point in becoming a CRA, uh, you might be coming from a uh, currently being a clinical research coordinator at a site uh, working with a doctor, or uh, you might currently be a clinical trial assistant uh, working at a sponsor, so that's a, a pharmaceutical or biotech company. Um, so I'm going to be going over some key notes here uh, to really fine tune uh, what to expect in the pay and kind of how it varies across um, the industry. So uh, let's get into it. Um, so your pay range, if you look at Glassdoor, which I'll show a screenshot right here, um, the pay range is from about $52,000 to $90,000 annually. Uh, and that varies greatly, really depending on your location, um, your experience, and the company that you are applying to. Uh, so if you look here, um, really I'm, sh I'm looking at the pay ranges for the Los Angeles area in California. Um, you know, that's going to vary from state to state, of course. Uh, so um, just be, you know, have your expectations realistic to your location and as well as the experience that you're bringing to the table. Um, because, of course... Uh, the pay will also range depending if you're a CRA 1, CRA 2, CRA 3, um, and so forth. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, now the other thing to, to keep in mind is as you're entering in this, in, in this industry and you're trying to become a CRA, um, many times you're going to have to go through uh, recruiters. Um, and those recruiters will likely bring you into a job uh, for a pharmaceutical or biotech company as a contract worker. Uh, what that means is you're not hired directly by uh, the company. So let's, um, you know, some some uh, sponsor, you know, they're not hiring you directly. What's happening as a contract worker is you are being hired by a third party agency, a hiring agency. And uh, these companies will hire, will hire you and place you at the company that you applied for. Um, so really, the, there's a couple of downsides to this. Um, one is is the pay many times will suffer. Um, you the reason being is they might put you in at you know let's say they put you in at fifty dollars an hour, uh, but your pay is thirty dollars an hour. So they're taking that difference of your pay for themselves. Um, so your 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 pay might suffer in this regard. Um, also benefits. Uh, you're not you're not gonna get you're gonna get very little to no benefits um, being a contract worker. So if you get hired as a contractor, um, you know you, you might get lucky if you get health insurance um, and and that's about it. That might you know as far as what you can expect uh, to get. Um, but sometimes depending on the company, depending on the agency, uh, the recruiter, etc. Sometimes you can negotiate um, to receive higher pay. Uh, so that you can afford to buy those benefits like medical insurance and so forth. Um, so you might want to try to negotiate that with the recruiter ahead of time to see if that's an option. Um, now the term for these contract workers, uh, typically you'll see, um, they might be open-ended, but sometimes they'll say things like, you know, six months um, with the potential to be extended or one year with the potential to be extended. Um, so for instance, when I got hired as a contract worker, um, being a CRA at a sponsor, uh, you know, they, they put me on as a CRA too. Uh, and it was really an open-ended contract. It wasn't stated as, uh, you know, six months or one year. It would just kind of, just, it didn't have an end date. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing, uh, you know, so it just depends on the company that you're working for. Um, sometimes they're going to say that they will convert you to a, to a permanent employee, meaning, meaning that the sponsor will hire you directly after, after a certain time period. Other times they don't mention that and you kind of got to test the waters as you get in there. Um, so what I recommend is if you go into there, just know that you're going to be there for at least six months to one year as a contracted worker. Um, in the meantime, it's really a good idea to communicate to your hiring manager um, that you want to be a permanent employee, that you want to be hired directly by the sponsor and ask them, uh, you know, how can that be done? Are they looking for 
um, for you to show something in terms of your experience? Are they looking, or, or maybe they can set up some sort of project for you to complete? And if you, you know, meet their expectations, then maybe they, that's a way to kind of, um, build a, a story or a, a argument, so to speak, um, for, for them converting you to a full time or to a permanent employee. Um, now the other option, of course, is, to apply elsewhere. So let's say you're in the company as a contract worker and, you know, six months goes by, you're approaching the year mark even, and there you haven't heard of any um, sign, you know, of, of, of your hiring manager, um, go, you know, planning to convert you soon to a permanent employee. So if, if you've expressed this once and, and, and they're not really you know, telling you essentially that it's going to happen or that it might happen and, and you, everything is just up in the air, I would recommend to start applying to, um, at, at different companies because at that six month mark, uh, other um, pharmaceutical and biotech companies um, in, in related fields will start to look at you and take you seriously as someone that they can bring on as a um, uh, as a direct hire rather than going through, you know, the third party hiring agency um so just keep that in mind keep your options open um you know make sure you're looking at job postings on linkedin and so forth um and you know just keep your head up and this is really just the way to get into the industry um and you know it's kind of like just paying your dues um so anyways uh you know of course when you get with direct hire you it's 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 a much better option um so for for instance uh with direct hire you are going to get really a lot of great benefits typically. Um, so some key benefits to keep in mind that you might want to ask for if they're not offered right away is um, ask for a bonus, which is usually a certain percentage of your sa- of your entire salary. Um, of course, medical, vision, um, uh, and then a 401k match. So you want to look for, you know, maybe a 3%, 6% or higher match by the company for your 401k. Uh, so if someone, so if a company offers you 6%, it's actually a really good one. And, you know, I would, I would definitely advise to take that. Um, and typically though, when you are trying to be, to get, um, hired directly by the sponsor, um, they really want to have, they want you to have a lot of experience. So I just mentioned, you know, becoming a CRA at the six month mark, um, or the one year mark can sometimes get you, um, take uh hired directly by a another company sometimes um the other part of it though is your entire experience in the industry um they're really not looking to hire green people uh they want people with you know a number of years of experience so like for myself i came in there with about six or seven years of experience in the industry um and i already had you know worked as uh you know had some experience with monitoring um in the past that i kind of brought to the table when i went into the sponsor realm uh, so just keep that in mind. Your overall experience is going to be a factor, um, and and the companies that you're working for will be a factor. So, uh, for instance, if you get hired into biotech, a lot of times that's really a niche kind of um, markets. So, kind of once you're in, you're you're really good to go. You know, um, uh, a lot of companies will begin to take you seriously, um, and 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 you won't necessarily have to always go through. Um, you know, the recruiters or, you know, so sometimes you can apply directly to the pharmaceutical or biotech companies and they will just hire you directly in that fashion. Um, you know, so you just kind of got to keep your head up and um, uh, work your magic with, you know, interviews and, and, and your, your resume. And keep in mind, um, you know, I made an entire um, a video series on how to become a CRA. Uh, so be sure to look for that video um, in my channel or that that series of videos this is a three part video series, um, and that's a great way to kind of learn how to prepare to become a CRA. Um, now the final tip here is to uh, use your network. So you know if the pay looks good to you, um, uh, you think you have the right experience. A lot of times, uh, your network can can get you or help get you a job. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you are working currently as a coordinator for a doctor, that doctor obviously has some relationships with uh, sponsors, um, whether that be biotech or pharmaceutical. Ask that physician to reach out to his contacts at those sponsors to see if he can refer you uh, for a job with them. That's a really great way uh, to, 
to get in. Uh, referrals are big. Um, sponsors really take the word of their of their principal investigator seriously. Um, as long as that principal investigator has a good relationship with them, um, you know they're happy to hear out their their investigators. And if their investigators are you know referring someone of their own staff to work with them, uh, they will take that seriously. And sometimes that's a good way to get in. Um, of course, if that's your current job, you know if you're currently working for that um, physician, you may not want to do that. Um, which is totally understandable, um, but that's just something to consider. Uh, let's say this is just a doctor you worked with in the past in research, then you know reach out to those doctors and see if they can um, be of aid as well, or any other contacts that you have uh, that might be able to contact someone that they know at the sponsor for you. Um, but anyways, that's about it for today. Uh, I have, um, if you're interested in the uh, equipment that I'm using to make this video. In fact, I have a new camera today. Um, all the lighting, the camera, the stands, the mic, the computer. Um, I have Amazon affiliate links uh, down below in the description. So be sure to check those out. Um, it really helps out the channel a lot if you if you uh, make any sort of purchases uh, with those links. Um, I'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, and then also um, be sure to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button so you're notified um, of videos as I release. Um, and comment down below. Let me know what you want to hear about. Let me know if this video was helpful for you. Um, and you know, I have a lot of experience in this industry. I'm happy to answer as any questions. Um, feel free, leave comments down below. I want to hear from you. Um, and I'll be releasing soon, uh, my schedule for, um, uh, for these videos of when you know so that you know when to expect to see them uh, So I also have my Instagram and Facebook uh, linked down below be sure to follow me there uh, On the Instagram and Facebook. I do try to post about every single day um, So that's a great way to kind of learn um, in real time updates. I also give tips of the day I try to keep you guys more up to date on on uh, kind of what's going on with the channel as well as anything that I feel that might be beneficial for you guys to hear kind of on the fly. Um, so anyways, I uh, look forward to hearing from you guys soon and I'll see you guys at the next video.